So far, so good, right? Four weeks into this, MLR in Boston going pretty well. The guys are doing a good job transitioning into the uh, full-time process. So we've been, been pretty happy with, with, with that setup. Firstly, we're massively excited to be playing the first ever professional rugby game in Boston. It's something that the group is pretty proud of and um, you know, it's a very unique experience. So that in itself has got the whole group pretty enthusiastic about the game. Um, we're playing against Rugby Club New York, so they're pretty they're more established than us as a side, so they have a lot of threats across the park, but we're just looking to, you know, put a, put our best foot forward and um, do ourselves justice with the performance. I'm really looking forward to you know starting up this rivalry. Uh, Boston and New York have such a strong, rich history of rivalry in sports. And so I'm happy to contribute in the next chapter. Uh, and really looking forward to rugby being, you know, the next big rivalry between Boston and New York. and the visiting Rugby United New York squad. I'm Matt McCarthy, and I have the pleasure of being here with this stellar broadcast team of Mr. Steve Lewis, Mr. Austin, uh, Mr. Austin Ryan, Good afternoon, Matt. and Mr. John Broker. Gentlemen, welcome. Good Thanks afternoon, Matt. Us. Guys, we are just outside Boston, and we have a New York team here in the area, which means that we are re renewing that rivalry of that great sports tr tradition between New York and Boston. John, you're from up here. You know the players. You know the rivalry You know across the, uh, the board in sports. What's this mean for Major League Rugby? This, this is a very good thing, guys, for Major League Rugby. This is taking some of the natural sports rivalries in America and adding it to Major League Rugby. So we have Boston versus New York and so many sports. This just adds another one, and this is going to be a great day. I mean, we're really looking at two teams here in a different part of their development. Rooney, Rugby United New York, starts the Major League Rugby season in just about a month. So they are here to perfect things, to get their systems down, to get everything done. The Free Jacks, this is an audition. These guys want to play for Coach Josh Smith. They want to make the team. They want to be in the exhibition year next year as they develop. So they're really looking to impress and really bring something special to this game. So we have a great game of rugby here, and this rivalry, look forward to the future. This is going to be big. All right, fellas, before we get to the analysis of the match itself, there's been some Major League Rugby news that has caught, have caught our respective eyes. I don't know if I said that correctly, but Austin, why don't you take off with us with that first? Well, thanks, Matt. And we're going to start over in Utah with the Warriors, who made the semifinals in the 28 in the uh, MLR uh, playoffs last year. And while they have the departure of their leader and foundation, Paul Lasique, going abroad to play for the Harlequins, Coach Alf Daniels, uh, New Zealand native, has stressed building culture and that is a theme that will be prominent in this second season and Alf Daniels is looking to build that culture from his outstanding leading try scoring winner Tonada Lauti and he is joined by an experienced backline of players native to Utah all having that Highland rugby experience and they're looking to really build that cohesive culture as they get ready for the 2019 campaign. Yeah, the loss in Lasiki is going to be a tough one, but you know that he puts him on the radar perhaps with the exposure overseas. Steve, uh, we've got our northern neighbors uh, in, with an entree into the league. Why don't you talk about that for us? That's right. So um, we have Rugby United New York starting this season. The other addition, uh, franchise addition, is um, Toronto Arrows. Now on the field, they're going to be uh, very competitive. They are basically uh, evolution of the Ontario Blues which is the top provincial program in Canada for some time now. Uh, they're led by Chris Silverthorne, the coach, and Mark Winokur, who's the GM, who's also been the manager of Rugby Canada for some time. Um, so they're stock full of Canadian players. They're going to be very competitive on the field. An interesting um, off-field uh, thought about Canadian rugby is they're going to be the only Canadian team in the league, which gives them a couple of actually structural advantages. Firstly, they're getting paid in U.S. dollars, so in terms of their players... Uh, their players are pretty happy about that. Secondly, uh, they have free health care, so that's going to save them a few bob too. Yeah, and, you know, uh, not to be neglected, 
the teams that were in the finals, the Glendale Raptors and the Seattle Seawolves, who were the champions, <coughs> have not have not been just standing pat. They've made some big si- signings, including uh, just recently the Raptors adding the youth of Al Jabouri and uh, Germishais. Yeah. Uh, but, guys, uh, we were going to have uh, Tiffany Faye in the booth, who is making history as the first female coach for a professional rugby team in the United States. John, you were going to interview her, but we can certainly. She's busy right now. She's, she's coaching, so she's busy there. But Tiff Faye, who, you know, a couple of us are lucky enough to call a friend as well as a great uh, person in rugby in America. <laughs> Tiff is the first female coach in the MLR. She is brought on to this Rugby United team. She's going to be a great addition. She was coaching in the WPL with New York. She was a captain of the Women's Eagles in the last World Cup, a very experienced player, a very good player, really great rugby mind. She is going to do a phenomenal job and a great addition for this team. Yeah, and I'm wearing my New York Rugby Club hat in uh, (laughs) honor of Tiff. We are members of the team, uh, the club together. She's much better than I am. But we also have Jared Collinson coming in. Jared, why don't you come on in, but why don't we look at your your little promo that we have for you right now. I think we we can check that out. If we're ready for that, uh, maybe we'll see that afterwards. But in the meantime, oh, forget that. Scrap that. Live television. Steve? Live TV. So here we are. Very, very happy here to be interviewing my uh, friend and a guy I've coached and very familiar with, Jared Collinson, something of a local legend with Middlesex and then Mystic River, um, proponent both 7s and 15s. Great player. So first off, Jared, welcome. And why are you on crutches? Uh, thanks for having us, guys. Uh, yeah, I uh, tore my ACL back on uh, September 29th against uh, Old Blue in a nice little uh, title match there. But um, got my surgery last week and just making the best of it, trying to come back as strong and quick as possible. Yeah, so we wish well with that. So um, with regard to your relationship with New England Free Jacks, what is your role with them and, and how is that going for you? Yeah, um, I've been pretty blessed that um, Alex Magleby asked me to be the strength and conditioning coach and coordinator for the Free Jacks. Um, so the hands-on stuff with off the field um you know monitoring all their their stress from you know from playing on the field to you know trying to get as strong as they can in the weight room and whereabouts will you be doing this this is your uh, your business flight performance could, yeah. could you tell us where it is and yeah so um we opened up flight performance and fitness it's in uh newton massachusetts about two years ago we got about six thousand okay. square feet um it's just kind of like a strength conditioning facility we do all, all sorts of sports from ages high school youth all the way up to college collegiate and now we're cracking the professional market and so as a as a player a long time player in this neck of the world in, in terms of a opportunity now with the new england free jacks starting out how excited are local you can see it combine you know we had a lot of local guys coming from different clubs from all over the region um you know, and uh, just just talking to some of my athletes this morning over at the gym. You know, just people from you know all ages and all all clubs. So I think it's a big thing for the region. It's a big thing for uh, for Boston rugby. And uh, thank you for your efforts with that. And uh, I wish you well. Hope you recover quickly. We see you on the field as well as contributing off the field. Matt, back. To Thanks, you. Jared. Thanks, Jared. All right. So that was great, Stephen. Thank you. Uh, but gentlemen, we got a match behind us uh, about to, to go on, uh, get underway. Let's talk about that a bit. Um, Rooney definitely has an advantage overall because of the imminence of participation. They're going to be kicking off an anger here in January uh, in the league set up, whereas the Free Jacks are a whole season away. And it's pretty cool that they're actually submitting themselves to this kind of thing. They're looking for an opportunity to maybe get some players on the radar, blood some players. But you guys are familiar with many of these guys up here. Why don't you tell us a little bit about what we can look for respectfully uh, respectively with the backs and the pack. Absolutely. I mean, this this Free Jacks team, you know, they're a brand new team, but these aren't brand new players to each other. A lot of these guys have played together in a lot of different settings. So they're really going to be names that people know. They're really going to be good players, and they're pulling it together. And the forwards, you know, as much as they want to impress the coaches, as much as they want to be part of this team, and this is a tryout, they really need to play good rugby. They really need to do what what the structures dictate and do all those things. So in the forwards, you have a guy like Anthony Purpura, number three. He's going to be at uh, tight head prop. Capped Eagle, about 10 or 11 caps, I believe. He really needs to be a leader. He's the vice captain. He has to get the forwards doing the right things, making the right plays, and playing under the structures and playing it hard to make that successful. 
and to get some ball, you know, get some offense going against a team like Bruni, who's going to have a little bit more practice under their belt and is headed into the, the active season, they're going to need a guy like John Kokinda, right? He is not the biggest guy on the park, but John Kokinda is a workhorse. He is going to have to be all over the ball to give him that go forward and all over the ball on the defense to slow things down. So look for those two players to really, really lead from the front today and be a key part of that team. And to follow up with John, guys, it's well, with the Free Jacks, uh, uh, this being an exhibition, they have an opportunity to showcase their talent. And Todd Leader, who is a sensational Irish-born fly half, is going to lead a very dynamic, fast-paced, try-happy back line. And there's a balance that has to be struck because with the opportunity to showcase your talent and to make the squad, uh, you have to play within yourself. But at the same time, you have to put points on the board. And Todd is uh, going to lead from the front. He's going to be the pivot man for that back line. And we're going to see a lot of fireworks this, this afternoon. Yeah, and only an Irishman would leave the sunny shores <laughs> of San Diego and the San Diego Legion to come play in the lure of Boston. Right, guys? Uh, but, Steve, you're... Uh, familiar with m most of these players across the board and in the United States in general because you have been a successful coach in all codes, in male and female, but you do live in New York City. You are familiar ex uh, especially with so with the New York United, the Rugby United New York. The, the, I got the, I'm going to get that right. The Rooney squad, <laughs> Rooney. right? Talk yes. to us about Rooney. Right. Well, obviously, um, they, as John correctly mentioned, they're different um, you know, stage of their evolution from the Free Jacks. And obviously, they're building from two very successful club teams, Old Blue and AC. And um, this team today is littered with players from there. Um, in terms of up front, who to look for, obviously, they've got veteran leadership in Nate Brakley in the second row, one of the smartest players in American rugby. So he's out here doing his thing. Uh, Ross Deacon in the back row is t tough running, another Irishman. And Matt Houston, I think, has been one of the most underrated players in American rugby for a while. He played in the Ohio Aviators and also played uh, last year with Nola Gold, and he's up here, chancing his arm here. In the backs, another Irish fly half is going to be of interest. I haven't seen him. We don't know him, but obviously he comes from a great pedigree at Leinster. Uh, Cahal Marsh is his name. Um, some of the other backs are more familiar. The only other one I point out is the number 13, Simu Smith, right. who I've coached uh, previously at Sevens. I think the kid has terrific footwork, and he might be the surprise of the day. All right, now, gentlemen, I know that you guys have to get up into the booth, but if one of you, we have Mr. Luke Hume coming in and joining us. Come on in, Luke. Luke, as you know, ladies and gentlemen, is uh, on the radar for the Eagles and Sevens and Fifteens. He's now with Rooney. He's a little bit sevens. dangerous. Sevens. <laughs> still got it, mate. Yeah, yeah. sure. Sevens and Fifteens faster it. than I am. John, take right. it away with I'm Mr. I'm here Hume. with Luke Hume, and uh, we're going to talk a little about the evolution of Rooney and how things are going. Luke uh, Hume, longtime player for the USA, 15s and 7s programs, playing in New York, unfortunate injury just at the beginning of the last tour. So you're back working with these boys, and, and you know, you're kind of behind the scenes a little bit as an inspiration now. How's preparations going? Yeah, more like a coach these days because I'm getting a bit too old. Um, but, no, it's good, uh, honestly. Got some really, really good players that have come in thus far. Uh, got a few more that we're still waiting on a few visas and whatnot, but... Like we said, we had a very, very strong season last year, so we're, we are expecting big things. We want to go deep, obviously, in the playoffs, but early doors still got a few things to, to work out to get there. All right, so we've been talking here that this is, you know, two stages, two teams in different stages of evolution, right? This is Free Jacks is pretty new. You guys are going into the season. What's the biggest thing the team wants to get out of today? It's tough because I think any time you want to take the pitch together, especially when it's early on in the season, continuity is probably the biggest thing. But it, it's tough to get continuity when we're still missing a lot of faces that you'd expect would be in the starting 15 as well. But I think you want to get as many people reps and you want to try and see who can solidify a position for that first round. Uh, and then, you know, you, you're giving opportunities to guys. But at the same time, they're a very dangerous foe. Uh, we don't know too much about them. We don't know what they're capable of. I think there are a little bit of expectations because of how well we've done our you know, inaugural season, what, whatever we want to call it last year. But... It's going to be a good game. We play against a lot of these guys for Mystic, so we know they're going to come. They're going to be tough. They're going to be physical. Uh, looking forward to it. Hey, right. And uh, what's kind of the goal for the season for the team? Oh, we want to win. There's no, you know, we're, we're not looking to make the semifinals or quarterfinals. We're expecting to take home the hardware 100%. We've got a good enough team. You know, the East is very, very strong. You know, West think they're stronger, <laughs> of course. It's always that battle. But, you know, we, we want to win the championship. Make no doubts about it. That's our goal. All right, and we cannot wait to see you on the field again, my friend. You're not too old. You're going to get there. We're excited to see you later on in the season as the injury comes back. But uh, that's Luke Hume, and we're going to go back to Matt I, I and bring in a couple other people. Keep growing the mustache until you get back on the field. <laughs> you have to hold it up. Yeah. Yeah. So you're going to there keep you growing go. that mustache yeah. until you get back on yeah, the field. Yeah, by the way, that is a great mustache. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well. We're going to hold you off until this season opens. 
opener. All right, so if you haven't guessed, we've got some new guests in the booth. While you two, well, the booth. While you guys make your way to the booth, thank you and good luck. They're getting ready for the broadcast. I have the pleasure. Come on over here, gentlemen. Uh, being with the uh, the heads of both organizations, Mr. James Kennedy of Rooney, obviously, and Mr. Alex Magleby of the Free Jacks, guys. Guys, it's finally come to fruition, right? I mean, you're you're kicking off an anger in in a in a month or so. You you guys are getting ready to go the season after, and this is you know this is more of a finding out process and just getting getting your feet wet. And and you've had different obstacles, but there's a lot of positives. Yeah. So let me you got to pick this up here for me. There you go, I mean, sir. Right, thanks again. James is they're they're further along in this process than we are, but certainly. Um, the challenges have been it's just there's been a lot of positive buzz and you know we're very fortunate in new england there's been a uh, a long history of rugby and it's good that the, all the all the clans are coming back together and i think part of our issue right now is just figuring out ways for the many people that want to be involved finding roles and and you know things for people to do and that's that's a great problem to have and that's kind of where we are and now we have a year to learn how to be a professional organization on and off the field so that's exciting and here at this complex, the what the Union Point yeah, Union sports Point, complex. Yeah, it's a, it's a great venue, and a lot of the local clubs play here, and it's and it's a good start for us. So we're pretty easily. It's able. Jerry Schaffer's place, right? Yeah, yeah and so Jerry's great, involved. Great rugby and, guy yeah, as well. You know, so it's, there's a there's a great rugby connection, and it's um it's nice that we get to play this first match, uh, here. And I'm you know I'm a guy that went to the University of Buffalo and played cold weather rugby, and you guys are familiar with some cold weather. It's great. You know, it's December. We've got sunshine. We're playing. You know, it's one yeah. of the realities. These guys just want to play, right? Yeah. So, and the fans, and I'm a fan today, we can just bundle up and enjoy it. You know, this is, a lot of these guys, this is, the, you know, the New Englanders are playing at home against New York. I mean, that's, how good yeah, is that? Awesome. Yeah. And we know we all, like me and I talk all the time, we've got a lot of work to do to make a professional, to support these guys and the kids below them and the coaches. But it's, we, you know, this is, this is it. You know, you, you start somewhere. You know, and we All right, well, today. well, gentlemen, we are getting the word that we are getting ready for the kickoff. Oh, great. And I just want to congratulate both of you on a, on a job well done, and the kits look great. So, but on that note, I think we have to throw back up to the guys in the booth. And on that note, Matt McCarthy for Mr. James Kennedy and Mr. Alex Magleby. Thanks, man. Don't go away, folks. <laughs> So far, so good, right? Four weeks in. Firstly, we're massively excited to be playing the first ever professional rugby game in Boston. It's something that the group is pretty proud of, and um, you know, it's a very unique experience. So. That in itself has got the whole group pretty enthusiastic about the game. Um, we're playing against Rugby Club New York, so they're pretty they're more established than us as a side. So they have a lot of threats across the park, but we're just looking to you know put a, put our best foot forward and um, do ourselves justice with the performance. I'm really looking forward to you know starting up this rivalry. Uh, Boston New York have such a strong, rich history of rivalry and sports, and so I'm happy to contribute in the next chapter. Uh, and really looking forward to rugby being you know the next big rivalry between Boston and New York.
back here. We are in the booth and we are ready to go at the Union Point Sports Complex. We are nestled here in between Foxborough and Fenway at another Boston venue. This is John Broker. I am joined again by Steve Lewis and Austin Ryan here in the booth. And we have Matt McCarthy on the sideline. Steve, you have a great game coming up here. Steve Lewis, Steve Lewis. Well, John, they look very fit, and they look very eager to get out there. This is, as we talked about in the pregame show, this is an excellent exhibition opportunity uh, for Rooney to put some polish on the finished product and for Free Jacks to uh, set the platform to see what they have going forward looking to the 2020 season. Yeah, I've, uh, I've seen Todd Leader play. I'm looking forward to seeing Kahal Marsh. He is just uh, outstandingly highly rated, so he's going to be part of the team today, and that's certainly going to be the ball. Are there any, uh, any matchups you're looking at today? Well, John, I'm really looking forward to see the forward packs against each other today, and the scrum, as we know, is just such a, a massive platform from which to attack in the modern game, and you have a second-row pairing of Nate Brakely and Miles McClone for Rooney. Experienced, talented, hard hitting and you have their opposites who really quite frankly we don't we're going to see what they're doing together for the first time yeah, Rona McCusker is pretty highly rated I've seen Jack Stevens play before so that should be very interesting and the teams are taking the field here at uh, Union Point so we're going to come up and give you our answers in just a minute yeah, go, keep going to the 15s oh. boys we have um, uh, Luke Wilson is going to be our referee for today's matchup we have some experience in Major League Rugby Squad today, by the way, is going to have a uh, you know about uh, 25, 26 guys in the roster, so they're getting a little, a little more extra substitutions Military so that they can get some playing time for people. So uh, if you hear a lot of names out there that you're surprised how many people are coming in, we're going to have a few extras. So it's going to be an interesting day. And uh, a big game here at this Union Sports uh, Union Point Complex team. Now it's got cold again. Now it got cold again. <laughs> <laughs> I got one. I got one. All right, we're all set for the anthem here.
John, it's very important that uh, this first kickoff in the first 10 minutes sets a, an excellent tone and platform for the day for both teams. Both teams are very eager, excited, you know, long bus ride for Rooney, uh, a lot of anticipation for the Free Jacks leading up to this first true exhibition matchup. Both teams need to come out of the gate, play their structure, but hit hard and uh, starve the opposite of the ball in order to establish a strong platform. Where are you? We good? Good? Night, good? And we have, it looks like the Hall Marsh to kick off his first, uh, his first kick on American soil, I believe, Steve. As the Hall Marsh puts up a kick to get us underway. Does not on. find 10, but taken away there by one of these free jack players. The free jacks are on the move already. As Eric Thompson, the USU 20, moves the balls to Diego. Backwards. Sierra. A veteran of Major League Rugby playing with two points last year. They're going to pick and go and try to straight away use some of that power. There's a player down already, and that's Todd Leader pushes that one over the head of Connor Wallace Sims. Connor Wallace Sims, USA 7 school player, some time with them. Puts the ball in a touch, and uh, after a little bit of an odd start, guys, we're going to have a, a first line out of the game. Well, we had a we had number six for the Free Jacks, Owen Hunt, go down uh, with his first carry, and uh, luckily he's up and he's okay. He's ready to go. Um, good thing he's uh, re re shook that off. And here's the line out from the Free Jacks. Diego Mequeira throwing in. Free Jacks attacking Rooney's, uh, breaks through the line here. Here's Mart, Marsh to the 15. This is Danny Collins breaking right in front of us here. Eric Thompson setting some good face play for his Free Jack attacking team. No balls out, playing advantage for loss forward. And now here is Cahill Marsh for Rooney who feels the grubber through. Referee Luke First man arriving. No advantage says loss, loss forward, forward by the Free Jacks in the contact. So this will be a Rooney scrum just outside their own 22. Take left of the mark for me. Yes. Take left of the mark for me. Yes, sir. Crouch. Halfback for Rooney, Marcus Walsh. Ready to put the, put the ball in for his scrum. Scrum's unstable, so referee Luke says we'll have it again. First up, packs to size each other up, see what we have. Pura, tight head for and vice captain for the Free Jacks, wearing number three, the six Eagle from the University of Maine. Looking to set a stable platform in the defensive scrum. Walsh signaling to his fly half marsh for Rooney. Sit! Use it now. Rooney keeping the ball in the scrum, testing, and then here's the ball out. Here goes Marsh going wide to Samu Smith, who makes a step inside, looking to offload, doesn't find a man, tackled just inside, just out of the 10 meter line of Rooney. Rooney continuing to use the space to the far side. Now halfback Walsh looks to come back inside. Use it. And they're going to go to the air here. Ball is charged down, so it's a free play. We all play on here. And the ball is fielded by the Free Jacks just on the other side of the halfway line. 
This is Hunt to the players. Looking to break the line there was Danny Collins. He was tackled just shy. And then this is leader to his wing, Dazio. Tackle row. He is tackled by a host of Rooney players. And Thompson Brink works it back to the middle of the field. We're back here, slight technical difficulty. Now we got our whole crew back on and we're excited to go here on Next Level Rugby. The Free Jacks are on the run here and they put the ball into the midfield. Come through the front there and keeping a lot of possession. They're looking pretty good. The slip ball, but they're hanging on to it. Steve, early days here for a team that has been together, but they're putting together some phases. They certainly are, and the, the handling's pretty good, actually. Dry conditions, obviously dry ball, that helps, but this is pretty impressive stuff from the Free Jacks so far. An overload coming here, and the ball goes up to Steve Dazzo to start with Brad, and Dazzo looks forward out of his hands. We have an advantage here for Rudy, and Rudy on their own line. All I had to do is talk to you about their sustained possession, and now we have uh, a slip ball as Rudy's going to get out of this one. But yeah, commentator's uh, curse there. And Steve and John, we talked about it in the pregame with how dynamic this free jack back line could be, and we were able to see some of that showcase there. Dazio just unlucky, dropped the ball forward, but. Yeah, Dazio, uh, Arlington Heights, Illinois native, played at Dartmouth. Steve, you know him. He didn't start playing rugby until a couple years into Dartmouth, correct? That's right, We're towards the end of his time at Dartmouth. Um, and then he came into the Mystic squad and played quite a bit of sevens. And, and actually a very good sevens player too. He's a tremendous athlete. Uh, very hard to bring down, as you saw there, but just couldn't control the ball. Just a little slip there, unlucky. Boys! A scrum here, second scrum of the game. <laughs> it's going to be Marcus Walsh. This 26-year-old Irish native. Yep, spent a bit of time at uh, Life University and then played for the AC in New York as well. Um, actually had a, steady, yeah? last, had a bit of time last year down with uh, Austin in the MLR. Referee Rogan set to bring us down again. Wants to make sure everything's stable. Something we'll see a lot of teams do here, guys, is they'll have their fly half uh, match up against the wing and they'll bring their inside center defend the Set. first receiver uh, this way if they uh, attack that first channel the a more uh, physical tackler this is uh, Peter Lupton but as they go to the weak side here step back for me step back to the side looking for an exit strategy here inside their 22 this forward battle going on as it is Marcus Walsh with the box kick, puts it in a touch, and we're going to have a line out here. Free backs, uh, Steve, spending a lot of time in the Rooney Force territory. Red. Yep, so far, I mean, uh, they won the territorial battle. We had a botched box kick over there from uh, Marcus Walsh early on, and since then, Free Jacks have dominated territory. In and set, please, in and set. First line out of the day, five man. Don't touch him after, please. Leader. Puts it into the hands of Josh Brown. Josh Brown. Away, Black. Some rugby with Rocky Gorge moves the ball on. Another no block here. Okay, front line. High advantage. Todd Leader looking wide now. And Leader puts it into Harajli's hands. Harajli gets tackled offside. but throws a penalty. And it's going to be an offside against uh, Rooney. Early days here, but it's been a lot of free decks ball. Yeah, and a very authoritative start from Leader. I think at uh, number 10, he's looked composed. He's moved the ball well. Very accurate in his distribution. Uh, Kicking, pretty useful too. He's an impressive star from him. Yeah, he's having a good day so far. Well, they're, then they're, the back line wants nice. to attack forward, and they want to attack fast-paced. And we see that with uh, Harajli uh, taking the ball up hard and attacking his opposite. Harajli had a little bit of sevens experience. He was uh, put to one tour with the USA. He, he got capped. He got capped, yep. Spent a, quite a bit of time at Chula Vista, and uh, did get a cap, yep. Talented player, great athlete. Ball's there, ball's available. Oh, here they go on the run. It's like Vakier, the hooker going in there. Go roll! Just about 10 meters out is the Free Jacks team looking to open up the scoring here, and that was McCusker. McCusker, the Irish native, brings it in. And now the ball away. That was Harajli, but Harajli can only slip a pass off. Didn't have runners with him. Slightly isolated, but they're on the line now, and they are pushing towards it. They want this early try. The crowd is getting behind. Mo! 
trying to hold them up. They're really defenders. Under a lot of pressure, they will knock on in there. They're going to get away with it. Going to have a, an early strike. John, that was, John, that was, uh, that was the lock. John, that was the lock uh, pair of Brackley and McClone there with the goal line stand for Rooney there to hold, force the hold up in the mall and then the turnover. And we're going to have a scrum here for Rooney inside their own zone. A second one under a lot of pressure. So you get a look at the captain Brackley there getting the team together and the number eight Ross Beacon the Irish contingent here, but born in San Francisco. Ross Beacon on the back. And if they're inside their own zone, uh, Austin, they're going to have to, this is just an exit strategy. They're going to want to move this ball downfield and get the territory. Yeah, you've been playing uh, on your back foot for the first 10 minutes here. It's time to get on the front foot. <laughs> referee Rogan just holding things up for a second here, make sure everything is good. Nice stable platform wants to set that as Marcus walks again. They feed the ball in. The Hall Mark in his own side zone on the post. Just behind this shot. Did you have it for a little while? Is there do you want it to come down? As both teams look to continue to establish a stable platform in the scrum, referee Luke uh, only accepting first-class scrummaging here. This is Walsh looking to exit for with his fly half, Cahill Marsh. And finally, re referee Luke said that's enough, and he's going to award the penalty to Rooney. And that is a fortuitous opportunity for Rooney to get out of its own end into an attacking opportunity. Referee Luke saying the front row engagement going straight down, collapsing the engagement, and that is the scrimmage by the Free Jacks. And now Rooney will have its line out just outside its own 22 meter line in its own end still. Rooney attacking with a four man, five man line out. Excuse me, this is full. And that's Hamilton with the throw in. Goes to the back, that is Ross Deacon that's from nice. Uni College and lands down, play with lands down for a little bit. Come on, five. Get back. And this is, and, and Marsh looks close to kick over the top. And this is well fielded, but then uh, equally tackled by Danny Collins of the Free Jacks. But D'Souza gets to his feet, continues the attacking front foot, and here goes Marcus Walsh. And Rooney finally demonstrating what it can do on the attacking foot as, Mar as Marsh puts it through. Ball finds touch, it is Rooney ball, and they choose to go quickly here. And here's Walsh with the, the, this wiry halfback continuing down the far sideline. Supported by a host of forward no, players. No. In comes Mike St. Clair. And this is and this is Marsh. Yes. Bringing it back to the far right side here. Here's Marsh. Throw goes behind Samu Smith to his fullback, Wallace Sims, who's able to find his center. But the Free Jacks showing incredible defensive tenacity, forcing the knock on, and it'll be a Free Jack scrum just outside their 22. And there was an, uh, a really good opportunity there to see what Rooney can do when they have the ball in hand, and the Free Jacks had an opportunity to showcase their defense. So both teams coming out here with purpose as we are just over 13 minutes here at Union Sports Union Point Sports Complex here in Weymouth, Massachusetts. Has Steve, have been able to hear Steve? Halfback Eric Thompson for the Free Jacks will put the ball in the scrum. He is followed closely by Marcus Walsh. Set. <laughs> Referee 
Luke says scrum needs some work and we're gonna have it again. Thompson. Another strong engagement by both opposing packs. Rooney trying to put on a shove here. And then this is Josh Brown attacking off the base. He finds Leader, and Leader's going to put it to the foot. What? Fielded by Wallace Sims for Rooney, and he finds his winger, D'Souza, uh, who's going to run across clear. the field. And he is met by two free jack players, no, one of them being Dave McKenna, the front rower from Branger Springfield College. Go. Test, test. Referee Luke says tackle. Here is Marsh to his eight man Deacon who works it outside. Here's Samu Smith on the outside opportunity with a huge opportunity. Steps on his inside foot. He's going to make it down the sideline. Steps back inside and he will score for Rooney. What a great play there by Samu Smith. Steve Lewis, you were talking about it before the we game. We were. That is just something you can't teach. Yeah, we alluded to it in the uh, pregame show. He's a talented player, great feet, and he showed some real incisiveness there. He, he stepped on the accelerator, stepped on the gas, kept going, kept going, beat the final man. Great individual effort, but a uh, good ball. Yeah, certainly from uh, Seymour Smith, star of the show at the moment. Seymour Smith, another uh, convert, Concord, New Hampshire native, went to uh, Southern Connecticut State University for football and saw rugby, came over, and... What's oh, oh, we talked about it a little bit, and uh, it's nice to see Rooney have the, the, the attacking opportunity, and they didn't disappoint. Uh, Smith, very dynamic, quick step, beautiful step off the outside foot, back inside, found some space, dots the try in nearly under the post. So here we are, 16 minutes in, and Cajal Marsh with his first shot at goal, hits it, and it's 7-0 Rooney over the New England Free Jacks here at the sports complex. And Steve, after Free Jacks in the zone, in the zone, in the zone, Rooney needs one shot at the ball and one good break, and they made the most of it. Absolutely. So very much against the run of play. Um, you know, Free Jacks had dominated possession, dominated territory. It sort of got stuck a little attritional, some scrums being reset. And then the first or second really clean ball New York received up the left-hand side, clean break, score. And Smith scores the first try in this new rivalry between these Major League Rugby teams. And Leader steps up to get us back into play. The Irish U-20. Beautiful kick. Yeah, hangs one up there for Vakasisi Kakala, who comes down with it. And he powers his way into the Free Jacks defense with Walsh marshaling his troops. Fully bound, please. He's through the middle, fire. Free Jacks players coming through. Referee Rogan says it's okay. They may have turned this ball over, and they have done. And the ball is there for Eric Thompson. Thompson moves it out there to Hunt. Hunt moves it out to Harajli. Great tackle he by Smith. Well hit. Big hit by Smith. Follows up his try. As the ball now moves out into the... Both teams asserting road. themselves defensively, John. Good defensive work here. As leader, ball slips out ahead of him. We have an advantage here for Rooney. But we're going to come right back to the scrum. And unfortunate, just a little defensive pressure on there. Well, it was very important for the Free Jacks to respond to that try with a solid defensive effort off that kickoff, which we saw. But then Samuth Smith says, no, 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 we can play defense too with that big open field tackle. Steve, we have a scrum here for Rooney just inside their own half. Ball on the right-hand side. What would you expect to see here? Well, they're going left by the look of it. Uh, well, the backs are going left, certainly. So perhaps this is number eight break to the blind side. You never know. Trying to draw someone across. Deacon 6'2", 242 at the back of this. Alternatively, it could, could be an inside ball from Marsh to St. Clair by the look of it. Little jersey change there in St. Clair. Getting yep. the ball directly. And St. Clair takes it into contact for a starter play. As the forward's getting marshaled up there, but the ball comes out to Cajal Marsh. Cajal Marsh misses Simu Smith that time. As the Ball slips up there to Connor Wallace-Sims. We'll see what we're coming back with here. 
but it was knocked on in that little exchange there. We're going to have a scrum here for the Free Jacks. Well, both teams are using a lot of misdirection, a lot of dummy runners, uh, throwing the ball behind those players to create blockers and shields. And the work rate of both teams as we're approaching 20 minutes into this game here is very high, and we hope to see it maintained throughout this contest. set to get underway here as Thompson to put the ball in. Referee Rogan brings them together. Got a ball to be surely brought out to leader into this back line and he's got runners in a couple of directions here. Goes for a tunnel pass and moves it through. Ball is out to the wing there for Dazzo. Dazzo has done so well so far. Dazzo gets through a couple. It takes two or three to bring him down. Some of those Rudy players are over the ball pretty quickly there, but unable to turn it over. The ball moves out to the waiting forwards, and that's Josh Brown and Brown. And then now the ball sits back out to Leader. Leader gets it into the midfield. Good defense there by Rooney to shut that down. That was Mike Brown. Off to the width now go the Free Jacks, lining up their players across field here. The ball back out into the forwards. And looked like Hunt there that took that in. Leader one more time gets the ball and slips it out the back. Looking for the footwork there is their fullback, Danny Collins. The local boy went to BC High. The ball comes out into Thompson's hands. Thompson sits in the forwards for a little tip pass. Again, taken down by this strong and aggressive Rooney defense. Leader now has to go to the foot, tries to put it back over. Ball goes into Alex hey, D'Souza's hands and back to Connor Wallace Sims. We're going to like hook that one in a touch. Yeah, a little error there from Connor Wallace Sims. Uh, not necessarily his fault, but once the ball had come back into the 22, he had to keep the ball in play, and it didn't went straight out. Territory for Free Jacks. All right, and we are at the 20-minute mark here. I believe there is going to be an intermission at this point, so. Reason for the penalty. Referee Rogan here just having a little bit of a conversation. And this is going to be just a couple of minute break here. Yeah, four 20 minute periods today. Uh, two minute uh, breaks between the first two and the third and fourth, and then an eight minute half time. That's really just enough time to make just a couple of adjustments, perhaps. I wouldn't imagine too many personnel changes at this, at this uh, juncture. Yeah, 20 minutes is a quick time, so we're going to see what happens. So, Austin, you know, that first 20-minute period, what did you see? Well, the Free, free Jacks have sh shown a lot of cohesion for a team that is out for its first campaign, first effort in this campaign. And Rooney showed a lot of composure, being able to defend its own end and force that scrum penalty and then get right on the attacking foot. What, what needs to be said... Uh, amongst both huddles right now is guys let's we're 20 minutes into this the game is still fairly new let's continue our structure and let's play our brand of rugby steve for rooney now just the, the difference in it is that one incredible break by simu smith but they're going to need to play a little better as a team what's coach tolkien's message probably a little more accuracy you know they've spilled the ball two three times now um so the, they're doing the right things but uh re ball retention is always a critical factor and a little more accuracy in the past, perhaps. But um, it's 20 minutes, you know, and it's this stage in the season. So the, both these coaches are, are looking at permutations, looking to see, if, you know, players working together, combinations, see how it works. So I, I would imagine they'll stick with the same guys for the next 20 and then start making changes thereafter. Yeah, Steve, that's, that's you talked about uh, Samu Smith in the pregame, and he really has hey not guys. disappointed so far. And then uh, Todd Leader really leading. Really a great vibe. You've got the Free Jacks playing with a little bit of a chip on their shoulder because a lot of these guys were with the Boston setup in the exhibition matches against Rooney last year, and nobody told them that they were significant underdogs. They are playing hard, physical, fast rugby. The collisions down here on the pitch are great. And one thing I've noticed, leader, tag leader of the Free Jacks, is a bigger dude than you think. These guys are physical, they're fast, they're, they're hungry. This is a great brand of rugby being played down here, and the fans ringing the stadium will, will, will underscore that. Thanks, Matt. And just a look here at the earlier in the game. And our 
rink is over here. We're going to be on to second half actor, second period action. For this, this is John Broker joined by Austin Ryan and Steve Lewis with Matt McCarthy on the sidelines. This next level rugby production of the MLR teams, Major League Rugby between Rugby United New York and the New England Free Jacks. We're going to start from a line out here. So, yeah, so let's um, just talk a little bit about the coaching setups, coaching staffs of uh, each team. Um, both are headed by well-known, well-proven local coaches. With uh, the Free Jacks, you've got Josh Smith, Middlesex, Mystic River, a couple of national championships under his belt. He's a key man in this area in New England in terms of coaching. And opposite him, of course, ex-Eagles coach Mike Tolkien, who also won national championships with the AC. These are two great coaches uh, from the northeast part of the states, and we'll talk about their assistant coaches too in a second. But being a, a very important part of this as the Free Jacks take down the line out and they are working their way towards the try line. This Free Jacks mall is pretty strong for a team that's just together a few days. So you can see Diego Machiera in there really trying to get these boys going, bring his experience. Harajli moves it out. Dazzo's one on one with Connor Wallace Sims. Wallace Sims Third brings it down. But not an easy task. The ball is up to Thompson. Thompson moves it on there to Ronan McCusker. Ball moves across one more time. Looks like Big Dave McKenna taking it in. Oh, no! The ball's up to Machiari. He's got a runner on the inside in Hunt. Owen Hunt, the Cleveland-born forward for this Free Jacks team. Now the ball gets moved out wide to Leader. Leader tries to come back in. Leader gets Roll, to Danny what? Collins, but he can't find the line. The Rooney finds himself once again on their own, defending on their own line. Has a quick handoff out there, and the Free Jacks are headed towards the try line. Referee Rogan spots it. Referee Rogan sees it. And we have a try here in the opposite corner from us for the Free Jacks. We are going to have to figure out who that player is. But nice, well-worked try there, Steve. Just the pressure finally paid off. That's right. And they, uh, you know, went left to right, a couple of phases, sucked in the Rooney defense, and then found sort of paid dirt on that right-hand side, white on the right-hand side. Great first try there for this Free Jacks team. And Austin, tell us what you see. Well, here's the replay here, and uh, that is the big inside center for the Free Jacks, number 12, Peter Lupton, who was able to fend off the defender, a would-be Rooney defender, took two more players with him as he dotted the ball across the line for a try. So a Lupton try has him down two points here. We have a long shot, bit of an angle here for Leader. We'll see how he deals with it. But Steve, no real breeze to speak of here. Should be a pretty straightforward kick. Yeah, well, it's a bit white out there, but this is what fly halves get paid for, right? I mean, not just pretty boys. They, they need to be able to kick the ball. So um, this dish is kickable for a professional fly half. Absolutely. As Leader lines up his kick. motion takes a step it's got the height it's got the distance it's got the accuracy and we are all tied up here at Union Point Sports Complex as a great well worked try results in a Lupton score for the Free Jacks John it's it's clear that Rooney wants to uh, contest every breakdown and it, and that free the Free Jacks want to play very wide with the ball and that could choose that could come up to be a very uh, interesting matchup as this game continues because you get sucked in inside you're going to get beaten outside Rooney goes long this time through Cajal Marsh ball comes down into McCusker's hands ball looks like it comes down to Thompson there we'll have to make a break a scrum no, half in as leader comes into that position gets the ball to Machiera And a penalty against the Free Jacks now. That uh, contesting at every breakdown pays off this time for Rooney as they're going to have a not releasing penalty against the Free Jacks. And they'll choose to do with it what they will. Big turnover there by Rooney and uh, excellent response to the try. Both teams trading punches in this game. And it, we really have a good contest on our hands today, John. Cajal Marsh looks like he's going for the corner, and he is. Steve, I'd say this team is here to score some tries. Yep, well, in the modern game, if you can't punch it in from five yards out with a line-out mall, um, you know, you're, uh, 
you're not earning your money. <laughs> Let's put it that way. So most, most teams, you know, have a couple of um, options here. We'll see what New York come up with. But, you know, they should be confident. They were five, six yards out. And they go to McClone in the middle of the line out there. They are now driving it in. Around, go around, Defense pushing them across the field. Same move. The Free Jacks headed to pressure on defense now. And here goes that Rooney forward pack missing Dylan Fawcett. Slight injury at the end of the Eagles tour, but held up in the try zone. But well worked there and a good bit of power. We're going to have a scrum now for this Rooney team just five meters out. Great line out platform there started by the Rooney number five. Miles McQuone, uh, great take into the line out. Supported very quickly, strong mall, but credit to Free Jacks for being able to get through the, the wall there and uh, hold it up for a scrum just outside their own line. We have the scrums getting ready to come together here. Just a slight delay. with the put in. Deacon peeks off the back to see what's going on in either direction. Save this one will probably stay with the forwards. And they're going for the pushover try. Forwards coach Keith Lensing. Referee has the arm out for advantage here, John. Bakasisi Kakala takes that one into contact and they didn't want to score straight away. Do have that advantage they have runners in a number of directions there do this rooney team and a free play as a heck of the line and try awarded great forward work there just piling around we'll have to see who comes up with that one is another tightly worked move there as they go over the line great patience by the forward pack of rooney knowing they had the advantage as we see on the replay here taking their time right on the try line excellent well done and they had the advantage from the scrum penalty and and they just use their work the ball through the through the cycle there. Yeah, no, no, you can with a pretty much a chip shot now, Steve. Chip shot indeed. So <laughs> four, 14 to seven, and just at this juncture might be interesting talking about a couple of players that are missing from respective lineups. So Dylan Foster got a bit of a shoulder bang uh, against Ireland. Uh, coming, he'll be coming back at hooker. That's the um, life and old blue hooker. Uh, Seamus Kelly at center. He's injured with a sore back right now. And obviously Luke Hume, the loquacious Luke Hume. You can hear him before you see him. He's got uh, his world famous Hume strings or hamstrings. <laughs> but uh, those are three obviously key pivotal players. When they come back, they'll add a lot to the squad. I understand there will be some other additions coming in foreign players in the next couple of weeks. takes a pretty good hit for his troubles. They felt it downfield with the foot over Leader's head, but Leader moves it out to Danny Collins. Stop there. Four, stop. A little bit of aerial ping pong here. Connor Wallace Sims, and then it was Collins. Now it's Cajal Marsh. Marsh, and he's put the pressure on Chris Frazier. Talented athlete, but not known for his boot, and just sure enough, he takes it up. Just thinking the same thing, Steve. Not known for his boot, but a tremendous runner. And the Free Jacks now in their own line is a territory game. The Hall Marsh pays off. Just need a clean exit here. And exits. that's not it. They don't have as it comes down to Connor Wallace Sims and moves the ball across to Mike St. Clair. St. Clair moves it across to Matt Houston. Stop out there, fire. They come across and eventually spill it. And it's going to be a Free Jacks scrum here. After having them pinned right on their own line. A little too uh, overeager there, John. Uh, the, they had the space, but not the support. And that one's where you just take it in and you reset, and then you attack uh, with, with uh, more numbers here. Change right now. It looks like yeah, bring him on. Derek yeah, yeah. Lipscomb um, of Old Blue coming on for Alex D'Souza with Mike Sinclair switching to the left wing. Looks like Lipscomb will be lining up on the right wing. That's an all... Old blue back three. <laughs> it certainly is. 
That's uh, Derek Lipscomb, the Columbia grad. Certainly a powerhouse on. player. He's a fairly sizable winger, I'd say. As we're set here with Thompson. Also a change of prop in, uh, in this um, it, uh, period. Okay. Yeah, Paddy Ryan coming on for Kirk Hamilton. Hines. Set. Oh, oh, Thompson. Ball taken yeah, against, against the head. There goes Ross Deacon. Tremendous. But spotted going the other way. And it's been put, no. uh, put away there by Kyle Marsh. And he gets the ball out to the wing. And Lipscomb gets his first touch of the ball. Now the ball back in to Nate Brakely, the captain. Brakely no, the what? Brad from Marblehead Mass. Takes that one in. And once again, the Kahal Marsh. Kahal Marsh thought he saw a gap there, but closed down quickly by the Spree Jacks defense. Now the ball to Connor Wallace Sims hands. Connor Wallace Sims can't find the outside. But the Pirates! team there and make some ground. Now we're on the run through Anthony Perry. Harry, the Plus prop, forward, knocks it on, coming in. Well, that's going to be frustrating for uh, Mike Tolkien. Uh, it's one, fifth, fourth, fifth knock on now. It's just, uh, it just interrupts, you know, your flow, your momentum, just when you think things are moving forward. Uh, unforced yep. error. Yeah, you're right, Steve. And credit to the Free Jacks for their line speed defensively. That That's what forces those kinds of mistakes. Nice scrum here for the Free Jacks. So having just lost one against the head, they'll be uh, keen to put things right here, this free jack scrum. They're on a solid scrum, clean ball, good exit. And good work in the last one. We'll see what this what happens here with Rooney with uh, Keith Lensing, their forwards coach. Doing a good job for this Rooney team. That one goes down just slightly, a leader off to the right. This time, bashes one downfield into Connor Wallace Sims' hands. Moves across to Derek Lipscomb. Lipscomb comes back the other way. A little bit of sevens type action there as he moves it back to Connor Wallace Sims. Wallace Sims finds some space this time, and he's got some runners with him as he moves the ball out. And now they're quickly moving it downfield, nearly knocked that one on, but reset, and they have runners to go here. The three Jacks under a bit of pressure, but a messy scrum as the ball gets moved up to Perry, and he's not going to lose it that time. Howling for his forwards, they get Brakely back into the action. Brakely with 16 caps gets driven backwards in the tackle by Mosquiera. The ball gets moved up Marsh again. Marsh to Simu Smith, the try scorer. He tries to step a couple. Ball bobbles out there and Ford the knockout came from the Free Jacks and wound up in a scrum here for Rooney in a great attacking position, Steve. Yep, they, um, again, they're, you know, 14-7. They've started, in my opinion, to exert a bit of dominance here, but they need to get some reward for it. Um, they're now, you know, been camped in the Free Jacks now for a little bit, five, ten minutes, but haven't really produced anything. Good to see the Free Jacks, though, being able to defend their own end, and uh, the, the, the line speed continues to be there, but Rooney really beginning to uh, assert its pattern here. Yeah, first one by White, second one by Black. We're slapped out. Slapped out. Marcus Walsh oh. put this in for Rooney again. Rooney, another strong shot. I was just talking about Keith Lenton, the Namibian born forwards coach. I just found him in the local area. Well, actually, interesting story. He actually married an American who's working in New York, so he moved here anyway. Um, Good pedigree as a player. He um, played for Namibia, played for the Bulls, played for Leeds, played and coached in Japan as well. So a terrific addition to the no staff. Mike, Mike Tolkien happy to have him as Brakely into the distributor position that time. Moves the ball over there to Houston. Houston, the Charlotte native, 6'3", 220. And the ball moved out to Kahal Marsh, and he's forced to take it into contact. Connor Wallace Sims puts one out the back of it. Bakasisi Kakala is met by a defender in the ball at the same time. As Walsh trying to get his forwards marshaled one more time and has done. They've got some runners across the field here. A little pressure coming in. As that time Kahal Marsh decides to take it back inside. Roll now, boy! The ball up there for a big Alex McDonald. Citadel grad. Stop. 
this time here to Mike Brown from Cajal Marsh that time. And Brown, the hooker, brings it in, gets it back to Brakely. Brakely into contact and lost forward there. Another good bit of work by the Free Jacks defense as they've turned that one over and have the advantage for a knock on. Eric Thompson puts up a kick. He's not going to want to remember, but they're going to come back for the scrum. And we're going to have a scrum here inside their own zone under pressure, the Free Jacks team. Yeah, I mean, you get you got to give them credit, right? Solid D, they're sticking in, they're putting the tackles in, they're putting the bodies on the line, and they're forcing errors. So it's good, good D for the Free Jacks. Looks like we've got another change there. Christian Adams coming in on the, uh, looks like the right wing. Perhaps some injury to, it looks like, yeah, Chris Frazier's off. Christian Adams, or ex of AIC. In on the wing. AIC standout. Great player. Another sizable wing. Well, Steve, I'm sure you agree that watching uh, Cajal Marsh uh, direct this Rooney attack is, is quite masterful. He's uh, doing a lot of work off the ball to put players in a position to continue their front row push pressure. Yep, definitely. They're starting to get a bit of flow there, but, you know, phase play, and then that's when you can start pulling the strings as a fly half, and he certainly looks the part. Uh, both both fly halves, incidentally, quite assured thus far. Um, and that's what one would expect given their pedigree. <laughs> that's what they should. Yeah, it's good. I mean, they're both vision, both uh, slightly different players. One more physical and big and Todd Leader. And Cajal Marsh just marshalling these troops. I think with a couple of significant injuries there, we just uh, are perhaps seeing. We've had John Kikinda come off, uh, the sort of um, nuggety back row player for the Free Jacks. Chris Fraser we discussed on the wing. And also looks like Tony Papur has picked up a knock. So those are three top line, front line players. This could make a significant difference. This could be a big difference here for this Free Jacks team. We'll see what they do as another substitute comes rolling on. Not a not a good time to have a <laughs> front row replacement when you have a scrum in your own end. Especially the quality of Purpura. Referee Rogan sets the spot now, and he's happy with the substitutions. We're going to move some things on. I know strategically speaking that the the, the relieving pressure is the tactical uh, choice, but it would be nice to see the Free Jacks attack on their own end here and assert some confidence as they've been starved of the ball the last few minutes. Set. Lee's not standing in a kicking position, so I would assume there'll be something coming up the back here. Scrum goes down, however, and referee Rogan brings it back up. Up underneath you a lot more. Especially uh, Rooney has demonstrated the ability to counterattack very effectively. And uh, leader, the half, uh, fly half for Free Jacks, has not touched the ball in an attacking position for a good solid five to seven minutes now. It'd be nice to have him reassert himself. Kokinda just in front of us with a bloody nose. Looks like he's taking a pretty solid hit. He is a hound in those rocks, so not surprising as Free Jacks move the ball in the centers and crash it. Try to get themselves a little room and leader. He gets his boot to the ball on a slight angle. About now that's a quality exit right yeah. there from behind your own line. Punched it 30, 35 yards. Good to see. It's yours, fellas. And Rudy threw Mike Brown to throw this one in. Nate Brakely deciding what they want to do with it. They have a five-man line-out stepping into. As they go to Brakely, Brakely no problem. Ball down there for Walsh. Moles moves it. Bakasisi Gakala wraps oh, nice it around move. there to Cajal Marsh, and he's got some room, and he's got the vision to find a runner if they're there, but has to take it in himself. Just slightly off cue with his outside backs. It's going forward. And though. a little forward pass there off the back, and all that good work again comes to naught as the Free Jacks are going to have another scrum. Beautiful move there off the line-out. Just about four minutes to go here in this first half of this exciting matchup on Next Level Rugby. Another little miscue there at the end of a great move for this Rooney team. A scrum here for the Free Jacks. Oh, fellas, yeah, yeah, when we're ready. Yep. Crouch. Fine. McDonald's, that's you. 
set. Inside. Thompson puts it in, a good squeeze on by Rooney in this scrum. They may turn another one over here, but have not. And the ball to Leader, and Leader with some space hammers it downfield. Connor Wallace Sims should pick this up soon, but this ball is not going to go to touch. And Connor Wallace Sims thinking about the high ball, puts it high but not long. Knocked on by Brakely in the free air. Play here for the Free Jacks. A messy kick there as Rooney scrambling and Machiera. Puts in a little tip pass there. Simu Smith has to bring down big J Jackson Thebus. Leader now moving quickly out to Dazzo through Harajli. Running out of room on that side of the field, but they have runners with big Dave McKenna. The Bangor, Maine native, 6'5", 260, putting all of his weight into that one. That's Eric Thompson again, the leader. Leader has a forward pot in the middle this time. Cusker moves it out the back there, and the ball is into Christian Adams' hands. Christian Adams puts up a little pop, and off they go towards the try line. The Free Jacks scrambling. They've got huge numbers if they want to, but the ball slips in behind Todd Leader. And they're going to have to reset here. Huge overload out there. Yep, it was all, it was all there for the take on the left-hand side, but not quite accurate in that pass to the 10. And that, that pass allows Rooney to, to regroup get their defense reset here free jacks players screaming for the ball here <laughs> they know they want this try before halftime they're just a minute and some of these players are going to go off so they want to make sure this happens as the ball into one of the big waiting forwards there that was big jackson theobis endicott college and they have space again this time leader goes to the air and he puts it up over there and that's into harajli's hands harajli looking for somebody to offload it to what? and he has to take it in into contact there on his own. But penalty against, and we're going to go with a... Going to go with a penalty here against Rooney. So they went quick. I don't think we're going to have a card or anything, but uh, penalty against New York and the Free Jacks very late in this first half with a great opportunity here. I wouldn't be surprised if we see a yellow here. Um, doesn't look like it's happening. It was a quick tap. He was engaged immediately by the defender within five yards of the line. And I think if Rooney get away with this, they've got away with one. And they have. And it looks like they have. As okay. I decide to go to the corner. Off as well. Nate. Gonna go for You're the line out. Gonna go for these points. And as you said before, Steve, any team that can't score from five meters out with a line out these days. <laughs> we shall see. We shall see what Mr. Smith oh, and the Free Jack <laughs> forwards have got up in store for us. Route one, I would imagine. Yes. We've got a little bit of time difference here between what we're keeping in the scoreboard and the referees, so that's why we're still playing on here, John. Yep. All right, we are into referees time then. As they go to the center of the line out there and the drive is on. Let's see what the Free Jacks can do with this one. Rooney players just piling themselves into that one, trying to stop this momentum. Not particularly going anywhere. Looks like the ball goes to the ground there. Now they got some runners they're going to put it into. They slide it out into the middle of the field and that goes to the try scorer, Lupton. Lupton has to go into contact, but back around to Thebus. The oh, Enniscro all-star player during his college days and moved back out again. One of the big fellas trying to make a run there. Rooney defenders trying to pull their teammates out. Machiera a little bit on his own, but he's looking for that line, and Machiera can't find it. Players queuing up here for this Free Jacks team. That was Thebus headed towards the line. Held up again. Another solid hit there, just five meters out. And a pretty constant throughout the day today as Rooney on the line is an advantage here. Penalty against from referee Rogan. Second blow of the whistle, yeah, and we'll Steve, see what comes here. here. It comes. And it's Mike Sinclair, the uh, left wing for Rooney, getting the cheese. <laughs> you couldn't quite see exactly what uh, indiscretion he performed at a particular rut. I think he's, that's he's a uh, team penalty, a team yeah, uh, penalty there the with too many 
infringements with players lay laying on the ball, trying to slow the attack. They're going to go for another line out here, and it's going to be a man down for this Rooney team for 10 minutes of St. Clair. The final straw on referee Rogan's decision making there. Yeah, so final play of this uh, this period. So obviously, Free Jacks were looking to get something out of this territorial um, position they're in. And they go, no surprises. And they're driving towards the line once again. Are the Free Jacks referee Rogan spots a another penalty? Is that another penalty against Rooney? A uh, little no, inconclusive so. there. He signaled yeah. four free jacks, then he sort of turned a little bit. He's t having a chat with, uh, looks like, um, Nate, Nate Brakley. Brakley. Let's hear what he has to say. Well, this is what happens. This is what happens when you have a team that plays as wide as the free jacks do. You're forced to defend under duress, and they, with just being outside their own line, they're really desperate to defend their own end, uh, John and Steve. And another line out here as Leader pushes it in a touch. Kikinda back on after his bloody nose. Well, He's pretty useful in uh, close quarter situations like this. Strong player he is. As one more time, the Free Jacks headed towards the line. You can just see a shadow of the ball there. They're trying to keep this one and keep it driving as the Rooney forwards keep turning around. Referee Rogan says it's been stopped once. He wants them to use it. Free Jacks continue to try to get that drive on. As now the ball comes up to the back. Leader running for the line himself, and he finds it. Sorry, not leader. We'll see which player scored that try, but well worked there by the Free Jacks. Finally, a little seam opens up, and that try had to come, Steve. It did. It was looking ominous there for Rooney for the last five minutes or so. They were um, under pressure, one side in the lineup, other side in the lineup, multiple rucks, and ultimately it looked like Lupton in the center went clean through the middle. And we get a nice look at the replay here. Beautiful dummy from the Free Jack Center, Fraser, and he's able to go across. That's his second of the day. That's Lupton. Lupton. Yeah, second score of the day for Lupton there and just saw that gap and took it well done, and we are going to go... Into halftime here, most likely, with a tie score as the Free Jacks, after just a real week of assembly here in a sort of a trial period, push one through. And we're halftime here at the Union Point Sports Complex where the New England Free Jacks are tied with Rugby United New York, 14 all. We're going to have about an... And we're going to... We're going to shoot down to hey Matt guys. McCarthy. Yeah, thanks, guys. Uh, I am here with Coach Josh Smith, Josh Smith of the Free Jacks. Coach, how pivotal was that try and that yellow? Uh, it was good. Uh, you know, uh, the resilience by the forwards down there to you know, just keep grinding is, says a lot about where, where our club's at in these early days. Yeah, in the, in the two periods, it seems like you guys were on the front foot putting a lot of pressure. You didn't come away, come away with the points that maybe you could have. Then it was all Rooney toward the end, and that was a big change of momentum. Yeah, I think we we got to sort some stuff in the back three with the kick game, but um, I'm really happy where our forwards are at right now. All right, good luck, Coach. We'll see you in a little bit. All right, cheers. Uh, and before we go, we have um, uh, board member Paul Sentinelli of uh, the USA Rugby Board of Directors. Come on in here, Paul. I see you got your USA Rugby shirt on. How are you? Great. How are you? Fantastic day in Boston. Get to watch the inaugural kickoff for the Free Jacks. And for the folks that don't know you at home, you are a board of a board of director on the board of directors for USA Rugby. I am. I'm on the board of directors for USA Rugby, and I played for Mystic River. All right, so I just came back from Ireland where I saw professional matches and the national team play, and you got an inkling of what this can be. You've got a great little setup here. You've got a bunch of fans lining the fences. What's this like for you as a board member looking at an MLR match like this? I mean, seeing the audience, seeing the people that are here that are lining up on a balmy New England day to watch rugby, uh, you can't beat this. I mean, this is about growing the game. This is what we're here for. You can see by the people really excited about watching their home team play. Um, really excited to see Free Jacks jump in the MLR. Um, this, this is a great day. You can't beat this for American rugby. Well, I noticed that you had to take your jacket off as a front row guy and show up the back. I'm all bundled up, right? But it's great seeing you. We, we don't, we're out of time right now. We're going to be right back, folks. Don't go away. These are fast halves. Only seven minutes. We'll be right back after this. Thanks, Matt.
Hey, everybody. Matt McCarthy here with uh, Coach Mike talking of Rugby United. Mike, a little frustrating with some unforced errors perhaps in the first half and then that yellow card. How do you guys feel about the second half coming up? Yeah, exactly right. You know, we finally got some territory uh, able to play in their end, and we squandered a number of times uh, putting pressure on ourselves, and those turnovers turned into pressure from them. So we just got to get rid of those turnovers and start playing the game down in their end more. Stick to the game plan or changing things up at all? Uh, a little change, a little adjustment from what they were showing us. But I think the main thing is just playing simple, keeping the ball and keep moving forward, playing uh, playing closer to their goal on the hours. How's the health of the squad coming out? Yeah, fine. You know, it's first time out, so there's, you know, first game fatigue, uh, but nothing, uh, nothing out of the ordinary. And it is rolling subs and substitutes can come back in? It is, yeah. All right, thanks, Mike. Good luck in the second half. You got it, Mike. All right, guys, we'll throw it you, to you back, back up in the booth to our esteemed colleague, Steve Lewis, Mr. John Broker, and Austin Ryan. Thank you very much, Matt McCarthy on the sidelines, and a pretty composed Coach Mike Tolkien right there at this tie game, 14 all. The Rooney team is tied with the Free Jacks. Steve, composed, calm, Mike Tolkien, I think he wants a lot more out of his team this half. Yeah, I, I think he alluded to it there, that uh, making mistakes, putting themselves under pressure. So he'll be a little frustrated with that, as any coach would. But, um, you know, his uh, demeanor... His demeanor, you know, communicates down to the players, so he can't be too melodramatic at this time of year. <laughs> He's a pretty calm guy. Leader again to get us started for the Free Jacks. A little bobble ball in the air there, but it comes down, and they're okay as Nate Brakely calms things down. And Mike Petrie is on the field now for this team. Mike, a vastly experienced scrum half I think it's 57 caps with the USA. He's had capped him three uh, Mike times. Mike Petrie, the master of the box kick, and uh, <laughs> that one was actually recaptured by Derek Lipscomb, so it worked. Yeah. 20 yards taken, and the ball possession retained. And Seamus Here we Smith. go, Simu Smith again. One more time breaking through. Simu Smith under the attention of two or three players, and he's having a very good game, finding that seam on the outside there. Now it's Cajal Marsh moves it on to Perry. And Petrie to Marsh. Ball goes in around the back there. And off to the wing they go, and Derek Lipscomb, the big man, powers his way across the 22. Ball into one of the forwards' hands there. Looks like Alex McDonald, two-time All-American, takes it in. Petri screaming for this ball, but penalty against the Free Jacks there. Yeah, that was a much better start to the second half from Rooney there. Um, the box kick, as I said, repossessed, moved up the field, crisp passing back and forth, and the exacted uh, penalty here, which is certainly kickable, but it looks like they will go for touch. And Austin, we had, uh, you know, we heard from Mike Tolkien there, but if you're Josh Smith, coach here of the Free Jacks, what is he telling his team at, half to, at that halftime break? Oh, well, he's telling them, great job, great start. He's telling them the, that you're, you're, you're going into the dressing room tied with a, a, a very talented Rooney team. Excellent job, keep it up. Can Got to continue that defensive line speed and continue to play wide with the ball when on attack. And remember, this uh, Rooney team is one man down right now as Mike St. Clair took a yellow card at the end of that first half. So they are battling one man down against the odds with their powerful set of forwards from that line out. Yeah, I think if this was actually a lead game, I think they would have, uh, you know, chewed up the clock there, taken the three and, uh, you know, used up a bit more time. But it, it is what it is, exhibition. They're confident in their line out and they might get some reward from here. And they do break through the line right there. And Petri looking for quick ball. Petri gets big. Quick ball moves it up to one of the reserve forwards for this Rooney side. And the ball gets moved back across quickly, and McDonald, or sorry, there's Matt Houston looking for the line. Matt Houston finds his way over, and it's a Houston try to open up the second half. That'll make Coach Tolkien much happier. And put your lead here, put that back in the lead for Rooney. And that's about as great of a start you could want being Rooney, and that's about as worse a start as you can want if you're the Free Jacks. And a lot of life and leadership injected by Mike Petrie's presence on the field. As you said, no stranger to game time experience at the highest levels. And a great job by Rooney coming right out of the gate here to open up the second half. So Mike Petri, obviously a great servant to the uh, American game. Uh, he's been out for a couple of years. I think he just likes the, the center competition. He just <laughs> wants to get a, one of these professional seasons under his belt. Um, you know, his, his role with Marcus Walsh there, you know, he could be spotting, it could be starting, it could be a variety of things. But he's certainly a good um, mature presence around, say, a clubhouse and a good influence on other players in terms of training and standards and those kind of things. So he models good behavior. I was just uh, I was thinking that myself. I mean, he... 
as Cajal Marsh slots one in. You know, just in those first couple of minutes, they look a little more calm, a little more composed. They got the cool head of uh, Mike Petri out there, and he's really made a quick difference early in this second half. Stevie is also coming back for a professional season in the World Cup year. Any thoughts? That's uh, <laughs> that's a bridge too far. Even you think for that's a bridge too far? Yep. Okay, just uh, you know something that crossed my mind the other day. Yeah, well, it's, you know, World Cup year people do get their their dander up. I mean, look at Hume; he's back on a bit of form and uh, making himself available again. And he's playing well, so so players get this last sniff of glory <laughs> and they go for it. So we'll well, why see. not? Either way, Mike, a great player, is Brakeley gets lifted and takes it down. We're back underway, and Petri looking for the box kick again, and there it goes. Nicely done. Lipscomb lets a player come down, taking that time. Very well done there by Derek Lipscomb not to get himself in some silly trouble. That's a great use of the aerial game there, John. Uh, you know, big kickoff back in their own end, and then Rooney forced to relieve pressure, and then... Uh, forced the turnover by tackling uh, the free jack player out of bounds and now Rooney has an attacking opportunity right at midfield ball goes to the front and Rooney's going to go quick with this oh. one and they've moved it back Mike Brown has to keep this ball in and does so and quick and smart play knock on Something happened there. A knock on it, a little extracurricular there, John. A little exchange of pleasantries over on the other side of the field. There would be not many things stupider than getting a, some kind of a ban for fighting in a preseason game. Always uh, a scary thing when you see big old Nate Brakely smiling <laughs> if, you're his, if you're his opposite. Uh, clearly, the, the extracurricular—he was part of the extracurriculars—and he's going to get right back into this game. And the intensity and the competition is only going to go up from here. And after that little miscue, it's going to be a free jacks ball, just inside their own forty. That's yet another yet another unforced error from Rooney. There, they just got to keep this error count down, get a bit of rhythm about them, and I think uh, they will prevail. But uh, you, you have to hand it to the Free Jacks for hanging in here. Not a lot of pundits. I mean, if I was a gambling man, I would have had money on Rooney by quite a bit more of a difference than we have right now. That's credit to the Free Jacks sticking with it. Good work in a short period of time there from Coach Smith. There's a squeeze on here from Rooney, but they're going to come off the back. And they have done. They've got some runners, but an interception there. Tremendously done. And another try here from Rooney as they are pulling ahead in this second half. A couple early tries and just vision right there. Yeah, right. And that's a good line speed there by Rooney. And with the free jacks there, that's uh, that's the risk you take when you play such a wide game, when you run those misdirections. And uh, that time Rooney just sniffed it right out as we get a great look at the replay here. Rooney aware, of the pre aware that the move was on as a leader has been... Uh, doing so with the free jack attack this entire game just good presence of mind that's a uh, good that that right there is a tolkien uh coaching point in the dressing room saying to pressure those misdirections and those mispasses actually i think one of the more interesting um aspects of that play though was the free jacks electing to do what they did in that part of the field i think that was the mistake they had a disintegrating scum scrum and they're still trying to move the ball and that's where they got picked off And Marsh now to extend the lead. And just a few minutes gone, we're already at 28-14 Rooney over the Free Jacks here at Union Sports uh, Union Point Sports Complex. John, we were t as we got a great look there at uh, Cajal Marsh uh, as he slotted that conversion. We were talking about before the game, not a overly physical imposing player but loaded with skill and talent and experience and that's what's so great about this game of rugby here is you don't necessarily have to be the biggest guy as long as you work at your talent and i think he's enjoying that connection with uh, mike petri right away and leader another high and hanging kick well taken by rooney Petri again to the air, and this seems to be the clear tactic. Rooney 
field at that time. Gavin DeMore Morrison in on that tackle. And balls up to the big fellow McKenna there. And he's hit hard at the line. Leader now has some runners, takes a flat ball, but that one's knocked on. Rooney with a chance to capitalize, but unable to do so. We're going to have a scrum here just inside their half and center of the field for Rugby United. Yeah, you just get a sense now that um, Rooney's pre-game sort of advantage in terms of personnel and time they've been together and perhaps their strength off the bench is starting to show a little bit. Uh, we've gone from 14-14 and an even contest. They're up 28-14. They just, there's just a feeling about it in the air. The tide has turned. Scrum here. And if you're free... If you're the free jacks here, uh, John and Steve, there's no need to lose hope or get disheartened or abandon the game plan, uh, but just have to take it up a notch now and uh, maintain possession when you have the ball. Ball to the back now, and off they go. Houston at the number eight position now. Petri running with the ball in one hand. Cannot find a runner, so they were without a scrum half for this one, but and it shows <laughs> as the ball goes slipping over the head there and there, right in the middle of the field where they started. Runners either way. Marsh now puts it out, and that's Connor Wallace Sims. Connor Wallace Sims gets it to Derek Lipscomb. Lipscomb takes it to the halfway line. Took a few phases to get this far, and not releasing. Great defensive work there in the in the contact area by Free Jacks, and they're going to have a penalty. And right there, it's that's that's a great way to get yourself back in this game to have the aggression, assert yourself, and take take the ball back so you have it. Steve, the more and more I watch uh, Cahal, uh, Cahal Marsh, it's 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 really quite beautiful. Every pass he throws finds the hand and puts his uh, puts his player into space, and just a true a true general out there from the fly out position. Yeah, well, he's come up through the uh, Leinster system, you know, and he's been a professional. He's been an academy player and a professional now for some time. And distribution and those handling skills—that's your bread and butter. And uh, if you can't do them, you, you don't get that far. So um, he's very smooth, great distribution. Jacks push it downfield. They set up a line out here inside the 22 of Rooney. Rooney set out to defend. Referee Rogan slows it down for a second. Not happy with something there. If you're the Free Jacks here, guys, you're down this end. You have to come away with points. Have to get back in this game right here, right now in this possession. Ball up to the front there, and now it's Leader with a couple of runners. Leader gets it to the Big fella, Brown. Brown takes it into contact. A little tip pass there. Well done. Ball comes up to the Jackson Thebus's hands, but turned over by Lipscomb. Lipscomb gets it out there to Simu Smith. He can't dance through that time. Gets the ball safely into contact as keeping it calm. One veteran to another is Petri to Brakely. No advantage. And a little knock on there, it looks like, by... The Free Jacks, we may have a scrum here for Rooney. Just about 15 meters out from their own line. Not quite the right attacking position they would want here. Probably going to play a little safety here, work on their exit strategy. Well, with Rooney looking to exit here, the Free Jacks should get this ball back with some uh, pretty decent position and uh, will look to counter to an attacking opportunity. There's a the ball at the back to Marsh. Marsh looking for a runner and finds him, and Simu Smith, Simu Smith gets a ball, popped out of his hands, but gets it back. Really unique. Look, referee is going to call it going forward there. Thought if he regathered, he'd be okay, but referee Rogan disagrees. Well, I would disagree with referee Rogan. <laughs> okay. he, re he recaptured the ball, regained the ball. That's sure. not, a, that's not, sure a that's not the first time you've disagreed with a referee. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm an evolved Steve coach these yes. days. I'm a different man. <laughs> I've given seminars at the coach-referee relationship. That's uh, certainly something people have to work on occasionally. Quite a dynamic player Smith is, though. 
beautiful step. Hard defender as much as he is a talented attacker too. Set, really set. putting on the talent today. We haven't seen him open up his outside attackers, his outside backs yet. He hasn't had that opportunity, but in ball in hand, he's been a really strong yeah. player. We went immediately down, fellas. Let's fix that guy. When you have a, a young player like that being led around the field uh, by Marsh, it, it really allows that, that player to grow into themselves and play within themselves. Not try to do too much, as we talked about. He came from Southern Connecticut uh, State University where he had to do it all, and now here he all he has to do is play his role to the best of his ability, and that's very liberating for a player of his age and, and caliber. Like I said, he's got Marsh next to him. He's got uh, Connor Wallace Sims behind him. So he's got some good, cool heads to talk to him. As the Free Jacks come off the back there and make a little break there, get the ball back to Leader. He hoofs the long one out there and off to the try zone there, looking for as Derek Lipstrom can't make the tackle. Christian Adams, the AIC grad, touches it down. And what a great reward for all that work. The Free Jacks back on the board, and they're pushing their way back into this game, boys. Yeah, that was pretty incisive in the midfield. Looked good, freed up a lot of space. Put out Christian Adams, former age grade player who's been in and out of rugby the last two or three years. Always had potential, never been as fit as possibly he could have been. Uh, but he did well to finish there, no question about it. Here's a good look at the replay here, guys. Beautiful inside out step to turn the corner and put the ball in the try by number 20, Adams. And now, just like we were talking about, the Free Jacks, still, while they still trail a score, momentum is still very, fairly even. And, uh, you know, conversion pending. We're, we're, we're right back into the thick of this game here. Leader to add the extras. And from that replay, it's not very often Derek Lipscomb is uh, unable to make that tackle. And player Christian Adams, great job to get around him. And Leader lines it up here. Todd Leader strikes it well and strikes it true. It's going to be 28-21. Rooney over the Free Jacks. That is a sweet strike of the ball, it has to be said. It's, uh, it's very exciting to think that if we have this caliber of play in December, what are we going to expect coming <laughs> up in the spring? This uh, Free Jacks team is going to be playing a set of exhibitions against all the Irish Academy. It's going to be a great spring up here in the Boston area. That's right. They've got um, a sort of five-way competition with, as you say, all four academy oh, yeah. sides from the Step Irish back. provinces, Munster, Connaught, Ulster, and Leinster. Um, that'll be a terrific learning opportunity for the Free Jacks. The leader goes to the air this time. I believe they call it a Gary Owen where he's from. As the ball gets popped up there, and Haraj Lee comes down with it, and he tries to break through. The ball to Christian Adams. And the ball bouncing back and forth as they slid down the field, but eventually it's going to be a knock-on by the Free Jacks. It'll be a scrum here for Rooney as Connor Wallace Sims is down. And I'm sure he's going to be attended to. Tad Leader also down, but looks like he's just stretching off some you got to look there. at the replay here. Ball just juggling through a free jack player's hands, low, falling forward there. Both players in a little bit of bother here. Interesting choice to go to the air there with by the free jacks, and you know, when you're uh, you, you're coming off a try and, and the momentum is shifting to your favor. Some might choose to go uh, with the ball in hand to continue to attack, but uh, leader decided to go to the air, and it almost did pay off for him. Certainly not afraid to try out some different things as Wallace Sims continues to get attention. That would be a, a big loss for Rooney today. Uh, he's been an integral part of this, uh, this team leading from the back like we talked about with uh, grooming guys like Samu Smith, but also on his counter-attacking ability and his defensive ability. He's made a lot of tackles on the outside. He seems to be okay. We're going to come back to the scrum here. Yeah. We'll wait. Yeah. You good to go? Slam back on, fellas. Scrum. 
That should be mentioned for a few minutes. Rooney's been back at full strength here as Mike St. Clair has been welcomed back in. Cajal Marsh surveying the situation as a scrum gets set here. The Penn State grad Mike Petrie, collegiate All-American as well as all the other honors, puts the ball in and it's at the back. And he's going to come straight up the back there. Look for St. Clair. St. Clair is going to find a defender. Good solid contact there. The ball gets moved quickly back to Brakely. Brakely crosses the halfway line for Rooney. Petri to the air again. Not getting the distance he probably wants on that one. Mike St. Clair comes in to try to get it, but Great it's taken take. down there. Wonderfully done. And Rooney still on the attack. The ball slipped forward there. An advantage here now to the Free Jacks. A little messy around the contact area as Christian Adams goes to the boot. Squanners the advantage. Connor Wallace Sims. Lose the ball himself and did a slippery ball. Can't say it's anything about the weather these last couple of minutes, but nobody able to hold on to it. And we're going to have a line out here. There's another smart Another's play there by Christian Adams. It has to be said, there was nothing on here on the halfway line. Just pushed it back, made the contest near the Rooney line. Smart play from him. Yeah, you good, say that. It's going to be Free Jack's ball just outside the 22. The ball goes to the center. And they're getting their drive on. Rooney. Referee screaming at them to come around the back, but they don't listen. And it's going up to balls up to Lupton again with an advantage here, a penalty advantage as Todd Leader gets the free play. And he's looking to go to the wing there. And he has done it. A little pass back in. And things are changing here in the greater Boston area. At Union Point Sports Complex is the Free Jacks on a free penalty play. Push a little kick over to the wing and just exceptional work out there. Well, beautiful use of the of the penalty advantage there and uh, uh, taking advantage of Rooney's aggression and line speed as we get a great look at the replay here. Leader with a beautiful kick over the top, thrown back inside to Lupton. And that man's got a hat trick today. That's three. Well done there by the Free Jacks. And we are 28-26 with Todd Leader set to try to tie it up here. That's been a, an increasing feature of the game the last couple of years is the effective use of the, it's called a kick pass, right? So Flyhouse putting it low velocity across the field to a wing wide in the wing. And yeah, uh, yeah, we'll right Leader's definitely connected with Steve Dazzo a couple of times yep. now to good effect and certainly for five points, possibly yep. seven. Dazzo with a smart play to keep it in. Leader taking his time would certainly want to slot this one. Leader has the distance. Assistant referees raise their flags, and we have a tie game here. What would you say about sweet strike of the ball <laughs> earlier there, Steve? Yeah, this boy can kick. This boy can <laughs> kick. This is 28 all. Just 60 minutes gone. 20 minutes left in this absorbing contest. He, he was We're actually taken. So end of intermission three, just our leader. You know, we shouldn't be surprised at the quality here. He was brought into the U.S. squad in a trip to Ireland, spending time with them. Not qualified yet, but uh, he will be. And obviously an accomplished footballer. So 28-28. End of third uh, period. And we're going to be shooting down to Matt McCarthy with some information. Yeah, hey, hey guys. Uh, we didn't anticipate this, did we? We have a tied match, and it's because of Tig Leader, who's been hitting these kicks from everywhere and leading his team on the pitch. Great match. Don't go away. Stay with us. 
So what I think what I think is going to be interesting uh, here in the final period is do they use it as an exhibition match and they want to see some of these French players or does that those competitive juices boil in these coaches? They want to win the game and get a W under the belt. So uh, what's going to happen? As the most accomplished coach in the box, I was just going to ask you that same exact question. Austin, what do you think? Well, I think that what's so great about this is, we and you touched upon it earlier in the uh, pregame, John, is that it doesn't matter what sport it is with uh, Boston and New York, or in this case, New York and New England, you are always going to have competitive juices flowing, and you are going to have that aggression and the desire to win and compete. And that is exactly what we have here today. And great thing for us is we were right on point with how these two fly halves are the uh are the foundation for their attacking teams and i don't think you could ask for a better advertisement for the start of a new rivalry here between new york and boston than well, this game tied with 20 minutes to go look i think for the free jacks this has been terrific it's a beautiful day beautiful venue really impressive crowd has been building during the course of the game and their guys have stuck in and uh, they're, they're going into the fourth period level. So I think all in all, great success so far for the Free Jacks. Rooney, by contrast, perhaps a little disappointed. They would have been uh, expecting a little more fluency, a little f fewer errors, and perhaps being in a little bit further ahead in the scoreboard. If you ask the Free Jacks, they probably want to get into the league for the coming spring. <laughs> they certainly would love to jump the gun. They do have a good schedule coming up that will prepare them for the following season. But Coach Smith must be very happy with their efforts so far as Cajal Marsh is going to get us started again. We got a really exciting 20 minutes of rugby coming up here, fellas. This is great. Cajal goes long. Cajal Marsh, a little collision in the back there by the Free Jacks. And we are underway in the final 20 minutes of this absorbing tied contest right now. We'll see who can come out on top. As the Free Jacks, just outside their 22, are going to go to the air. Have done with the box kick on their own. Lipscomb going back on it. Lipscomb comes down with it, gets it back to Connor Wallace-Sims. He's got a couple of runners out there with him. And off they go. The ball is moved to Marsh. Marsh finds some space in behind Danny Collins. Collins steps one, and he's found a gap in the field. Simu Smith coming to take him down to the midfield, but Collins a great run. And here we are with the Free Jacks on the move. Free Jacks through leader. Leader spots a little space in behind. St. Clair headed back on it. Petrie headed back on it, but they're under pressure. That's Petri. Adams again. Beautiful kick it. Chase of the kick and tackle. And it was Petrie that took it in, so they have to keep this. But they've stepped in a touch, and it's going to be a Free Jacks line out. Just 10 meters out from the Rooney line early in this final period. And the excitement is certainly building here. Well, the Free Jacks are uh, they're hungry and they're competing at it for everything. And Rooney is just trying to withstand the storm right now. And they're going to have to defend well here as I'm sure they're going to go to a, a driving mall here. Ball goes up to the top, and the Free Jacks driving their way towards the line. Ball is clear at the back. Ball gets popped out there, and they have a waiting forward. It looks like Brown takes it into contact. Now it's moved to Leader. Leader looking for that kick pass again. He's going for it, and not that time. Great take we're in the air. We're going to come back here for a penalty. That was a free play. Didn't see it initially. I'm guessing for an offsides. We're pulling down. Yeah, well, leader went for it again there with a kick pass, but off his left foot, incidentally, and it went. But Connor Wallace Sims was ready this time and claimed it. Came back for the penalty. Referee Rogan points out that it was pulling down that mall and is going to be a penalty as. Leader walks over with the ball. I suspect he'll go to the corner. None of these teams would want to win by points alone. They want to make a good statement here. Another line out. We'll see what they do this time as they go to the front. They're going to look to quickly drive this one in as Rooney's oh, trying to push him towards the side, but they've sheared off the back, and they're headed towards the line. Referee Rogan has a good 
eye on this one as they are at the try line. We'll see what he comes up with. And that ball is held up in the try zone by Rooney. Looks like we're going to have a five-meter scrum here for the New England Free Jacks. Another great attacking position for them. Yep, you need some kind of x-ray device to see if that had been touched down. <laughs> so uh, I think a fair decision by the ref on this occasion. Keith Lensing, the scrum coach for Rooney, I'm sure, will be looking for his team to put a big statement in on this one. Yeah, a couple of props off the bench, I think, in now Sullivan and uh, Hadley. So um, changes on both sides, so the, the, the scrum could be a bit of a lottery. But no. Uh, good squeeze on there, and they're under a lot of pressure, and they draw that penalty. Great work there by Rooney, getting themselves out of some trouble in this tied-up game. So that, that was the statement scrum of the day. Okay, we talked about two reserves props coming in, but they came in and they just made a statement. And we got a great look at the replay here. Just all eight in on the scrum, on the drive there from the scrum from Rooney. And as Steve said, emphatic statement made by Rooney as they exit out of their own end. And Marsh pushes it down just about 40 meters out. And getting out of jail that time is Rooney. And they're going to look to add to the points here and get back ahead on the scoreboard. Oh, my God, collapsing. Yep. Oh, about 30 meters out. It, that's, that's the most successful exit play you can have. Demolish their scrum. A <laughs> <laughs> uh, little bit of a messy ball, but they're okay as the ball goes to Gavin DeMore Morrison. He puts to Marsh, who puts in a long driving kick back over the head. Collins, I believe. He goes to step one, but he's caught that time. There are a couple of Rooney players over him. Great work of the breakdown there as the ball gets turned over. Ball in one hand, and off go Rooney. They're headed towards the line. Can this momentum carry them over? Five meters out, they're starting to regather here. Simu Smith puts one out wide there and dotting down the try. No problem is Derek Lipscomb. And just like that, Rooney are back ahead on the board. Great hands there. Uh, way to get down there and get that pass. Good initiative by Smith to step in at the scrum half uh, roll. And what is as a response to the statement, scrum, as Steve so eloquently put it, Right back here as we get a great look at the replay, barreling forward. Here's Smith, beautiful pass wide, great hands. Try awarded. For Coach Toko, going to be just what the doctor ordered. For Josh Smith, the opposite. It's Marsh's time. I don't think we've had a missed kick from these boys yet. Yeah, well, they're not getting paid for the haircuts, are they? <laughs> I mean, they're getting paid to kick goals. They're getting paid to run the game, and they've both done it well. Marsh to extend it a little more here. Gets the boot to it. And finds that one. We're perfect on the day for both kickers. And we are at 35-28. I don't know if it's uh, if there's something in the water over there, but both these uh, Irish-born fly halves really can't kick a goal. Once again, sending the ball into the atmosphere. Nice high kick there. And Rooney on the march. Got a little head of steam now, and that looked like Deacon who took that through to Brown. And Petri going for that box kick again, putting up the pressure in the air, and a great kick that time for Lipscomb. And that ball has whoa, hey, whoa, whoa. Hey, whoa. possibly been taken into touch. Okay, so there, was a little bit of there was a little bit of confusion over there as to whether or not the Free Jacks uh, received that ball in directly in touch or in the field of play and carried it out into touch. Referees had a quick chat about it, agreed. Ball was kicked directly into touch. 
A little overcooked there from Petri. We have a player down here for the Free Jacks, so it's going to take us just a second to get back involved. Medical team is going to come on. We're going to have to replace a player here for the Free Jacks. So with, uh, you know, 12 minutes to go here in the fourth quarter of this exhibition, this preseason game, obviously both coaches ringing the change. These things get a little scrappy, picking up a couple of injuries, and they tend to lose a bit of rhythm, a bit of flow. Um, looks like we have an injury to a free jack player. Uh, there needs some attention. It's a little bit of a delay. So do we think, will fitness play a factor in this? I'm sure that a big preseason push here by Rooney to get their fitness levels as high as they can go. Yeah, but this hasn't been a particularly fast game. Uh, it's been pretty fractured. Lots of set pieces. You got, you got those breaks. So it's not like it's been baking hot and they've been going end to end. <laughs> yeah, it, it really does have an effect on you as a player when you're playing quarters versus halves and it does disrupt the flow. And But but both teams carrying <laughs> conducting themselves as professionals and uh, playing through that and each player and each team getting the opportunity to showcase what they can do. Player off there for the Free Jacks. We're going to come back to the line out. Great opportunity here inside the Rooney 40 meter line. As some <laughs> ugly line out coordination happens. Little missed you there. See who comes up with this ball. I believe it's Rooney. I'm sorry, the Free Jacks, and they're still in the run, and they're oh. pushing towards the 22. A messy start to that line out, but it's come out all right. Now they move it to leader, and leader, uncharacteristic, knocks it on, and Gavin Demore Morrison, another AIC player on the field. Very great career for that young player, Gavin Demore Morrison, pushes it down, but the ball goes Use back that. to the Free Jacks possession, and they're going to barrel off the side here with a little pick and jam, try to spread the field. And they've got a couple of runners and keep it tight. And now they're inside the Rooney half. Another set of forwards there looking for a little tip move. It's not on, but they're going to be able to recycle this one. And the ball out to leader. Pushes it out to Lupton again. Lupton able to move that one to Collins. Collins gets the ball to Christian Adams. Not the pass he would have wanted forward, and forward. forward. We're going to go back here for a scrum, but some pretty good enterprise there from this Free jack side. Not directly in the touch, it's going forward. As we get a look at the replay here, there goes Danny Collins breaking away, trying to find Adams, just unfortunately not able to. And Free Jacks have made a replacement at the scrum half position, and you know, that, that, that young man is uh, trying, to, trying to get himself into the game quickly and needs to do so, needs to get that 9 10 exchange down. Petri having a conversation there. Playing uh, scrum half for the Free Jacks is number 19, Christian Slater. Fine. He was, uh, he did, uh, last year he played for the Houston Sabercats, MLR, and uh, prior to that he played his club rugby in Dallas. Stay right. down, seven. I agree, and he's got a, quite a player to play against as the ball gets moved out in the midfield there. Goal, let him go. Got his feet to the ground. Players have to release him, and Petri puts it back there and going crossfield, trying to get over Adams. Head was uh, Kahal Marsh, but hasn't happened to Danny Collins. Stop in front, stop in front. Rakes one downfield. Marsh again. Block down kick that time, and it's anybody's ball. A little mistake there. A little ball popped up there, and it's Kokinda. Kokinda looking for a runner. And the Free Jacks now moving out to the side there. And <laughs> that's the big fella, Harajli. And they score a try here. Unbelievable work there of a miscue from Gahal Marsh's first of the day. And we may soon be back to a tie score. What a game changer. And, and when you have a, a league like the MLR, that is the standard you come to expect. And that was just beautiful transition from attack to defense by the Free Jacks. And still plenty of time in this game as we get a great look at the replay. That's number 13. What? I think. 
Yeah, well, we, again, we, t we talk about it. It'd be a little bit disappointing for Cahill there because <laughs> there were actually two kicking mistakes. The first one immediately prior when he just cleared it in the middle of the field, which is never where you want to kick. Um, Adams picked it up and it was returned. And then again, thereafter, he got it charged down again by Christian Adams. So Christian Adams, two, Cahill, Marsh, <laughs> zero on that play. That was, uh, yeah, a surprising mistake from, from Marsh there. He just looked a little too mind. Wasn't quite sure what he wanted to do with it and got the kick off late. A leader. Still perfect on the day. And with 10 minutes to go on the game clock and a little referee's time, we are tied at 35 as New York and Boston continue the great rivalries between these sports towns. And Rooney to kick off. It's going to be an interesting last few minutes. Anybody care to make a little well, prediction we, here? Well, we just got a good look at the Free Jacks bench there. So I, I think the Free Jacks are definitely thinking they're going to walk away with a win on this one. Turned over there by Rooney. Great play. Wasn't sure exactly what happened. They're going to move it across field quickly. Beautiful ball from Petri to Marsh. He's got it to uh, Connor Wallace Sims. Connor Wallace Sims. Ball pops up and it's in Christian Adams' hands. Turned over here. And that's Slater. Slater gets the ball to Collins and he's trying to kick it ahead into space but doesn't find it. We're going to have a line out here for this Rooney team as the energy levels seem to be going the Free Jacks way a lot. Rooney's going to have to get something back in it here. You got to fly it down. Yeah, yeah, but they're yelling at me and he's a dog. So we're going to stop. We get a good look at the replay here, John and Steve, and Petri leading the counterattack, but Adams for the Free Jacks, beautiful strip, putting them right back on the attack. If Connor Wallace Sims could have gotten that little pass away to Seamus Smith, we might be having a different conversation right now. There was great work by Adams to shut him down. That's right. He's uh, he's had a good impact since he came on that uh, second period. Um, Christian's he's always been a good player. Never been sure whether he's been completely committed <laughs> to the game. I hope he is now because he's certainly got the talent and he's uh, he's done some good things there in the last. Uh, he's shown it today. 15, 20 minutes. Another player coming on for Rooney. I see there is Kyle Sumsian. He's a former Eagle, uh, BYU product. Actually captained the Houston SaberCats last year and is now the assistant coach for the Army Men's Program with Matt Sherman, so it's good to see Kyle back in the field. He's a hard-nosed flanker. Great He's certainly player. a good addition yeah. to any squad. He can certainly make a difference in these last few minutes here. Peak fitness. I wouldn't say he's right there right now, but uh, as I say, once he gets up to full speed, he will be significant. I, I say he's got eight minutes in him right now. It, hopefully he's got eight <laughs> minutes in him. I've got eight minutes in me. Well, this is where uh, we really get to see these players develop their composure. You, know, you have a tight game with less than 10 minutes to go, and this is where the team that makes the no mistakes, quite frankly, forget fewer mistakes, uh, the, is going to be the team that walks away with the victory here. And the, the most important thing that both teams have to do here is to not try and play outside of the game plan that they have been executing for the past now 73 minutes of rugby. We are going to have a replacement as the Free Jacks have a late injury here. Waiting just a second for a player to come off. We're going to have an attack right at the 40-meter line of the Free Jacks. <laughs> That's Steve Dazzo there, and he's you know he's a tough hombre. So that looks like fairly significant injury if he's coming off. Dazzo's had a great game on the wing today, certainly. Yeah, he's back on. Into the middle of the lineup they go, but not clean. Knocks in the referee there, but comes up to the Free Jacks, and he lets it go. Bit of luck there for this New England team, but turned over quickly. And right into the action Kyle Simpson, is Simerson. Yep. Again, out to one of these... 
Reserves here as they move the ball across field. The ball's back in Simu Smith's hands. Simu Smith looking for a seam and doesn't find it, but gets across the 50 meter line. He's had a great game today. The ball gets moved again into the midfield. Waiting pot of forwards there for Cajal Marsh. Petri ball again, chooses to go to his right, and he's got some runners. Gavin Demore Morrison. Gavin Demore Morrison always able to find some ground and does. Little pick and go off the back, but a possibly isolated player here for Rooney. But no problem, the ball's come back and a little slip pass there. And Demore Morrison takes the ball to the 22. And Rooney on the march. Cajal Marsh has some runners. Ball gets slipped out the back there. Unfortunately, not too much happening. Uh, Petri He's going to turn turned over there by Great Rooney. tackle there by the Free Jacks. Well done by the Free Jacks to get that ball back. And they are on the run now, and they've got some moves. Christian Adams, Christian Adams tries to fend off one. Gets the ball away before he's hauled in a touch. The big forwards there for this Free Jacks team. Takes it in, and Slater moves it into the midfield. A little pass out the back there for Leader. Not the best one he would have wanted, but he puts a long one in. Slightly ill-advised, and ball got pushed forward there, and that little push, a little too much of an attempt, and it's going to be another Rooney scrum. First-class turnover there by the Free Jacks, and just as Rooney looked to be gaining some momentum, the Free Jacks really arched their back as we get a look at the replay of their counterattacking effort here. Um, excellent, excellent stuff. That was the work we saw by Christian Adams there on that replay. He certainly has had an impact. Yeah, a couple of final changes here as the uh, last three, four minutes look a bit frantic. Both teams looking for a, a late winner. Yeah, these teams want a victory. It's a long bus ride back <laughs> to New York, four <laughs> hours without a win. That would be a long ride. Yeah, coming off for the Free Jacks there was number six, uh, Owen Hunt, and he's had a really tremendous game here. Been all over the field today, so hats off to him. And penalty against there, and they're going to go quick. Do they have the runners here as Big Ross Deacon piles into a couple of defenders there, and if they're going to come with an attempt to go wide, and shoulder tackle from Harajli fails to take his the attacker down, and Petri, Petri looking for a little space in behind, and Petri by himself at the moment. Player didn't quite release him, but got it away there as the ball comes out to Jamal Hadley. No, why no? He's lost the shot. Still Rooney ball here as they come up to parry. And he's looking for a runner with him. And on the move of the forwards for Rooney as they moved out to the back there to Marsh. And Marsh has got some runners. He's got St. Clair outside of him. But the ball's been spilled forward by Rooney. And Christian Adams, that dangerous runner, has ball in hand once again. Gets it just outside his 22 with a scrum advantage for the Free Jacks. And what a last few minutes we're going to have here as Free Jacks inside their own 22. Oh. <laughs> Sad leader almost lost the game for him there with a long speculative pass taken by Gavin DeMore Morrison. That we're going to come back. That would have been the play of the day. <laughs> a good awareness there by Adams to get right to his feet after the knock on and continue to attack. And I. I'm sure a leader knew he had the advantage, which is why he could open it up a little bit there. Yeah. But yeah, as you said, Steve, that would have been that would have been an exclamation point to the end of the day as we get a look at the replay. <laughs> leader trying to sling it long, yep. get the advantage on. And uh, here we go now with Rooney right on the 22. Yep, this is uh, but the Free Jacks. The scrum here for the Free Jacks from the advantage. But we have seen the Rooney scrum blow them up before. If there's a second time today you want to get that done, it would be now. They got Parry and Hamilton both their uh, starting props back on. Parry looking for some changes there, the big number one. Later to feed this one in. Ball at the tail. Mm, surprised they got away with that one. Yeah. <laughs> so they moved into the midfield. Looks like with Harajli again, but he spills one forward. 
And now we're an advantage here. Quick whistle, and it's going to be a scrum and a great position here for this Rooney team. Drop goal? What do you think? <laughs> what do you think? Right back in the pocket? Yep. I was thinking it's, a, it's certainly a possibility to get the win. Absolutely. Much, much... Uh, forgotten art you don't see a lot in games these days but uh, it's worth three points just like a penalty <laughs> and in this case would almost certainly be a match winner with uh, the clock winding down a minute to go and Rooney has left a huge side of the field open there Cajal Marsh to the left of this scrum Set. Connor Wall Sims to the right as Petri gets us going a little squeeze there and Deacon off the back Puts the ball out to Connor Wallace Sims. Connor Wallace Sims gets tripped up there. He's about 10 meters out from the Free Jacks line. Ball in contact again. And an advantage there. Penalty against Free Jacks late in this game. And referee Rogan right on the spot there. We'll see what they decide to do as. Ball up to Cajal Marsh for the post. Well, as we said before, you're an exhibition game, but players are competitive, <laughs> coaches are competitive, you still want to win. So if they can put three on the board here, escape Boston with a win, even a pre-season game, that's a result, yep. and you take it. It's better than the alternative, certainly. Well, by my, by my reckoning, I think that's the first penalty that the Free Jacks have committed when going for a turnover, and that's something, that's something to say when you are uh, just under 80 minutes into this contest, and just bad timing, unfortunately, for the Free Jacks there. Yeah, penalty count's been quite low, and actually yeah. I think that, that raises a point. The game has been refereed pretty well. Uh, Referee the fact Rogan. that we haven't discussed him, uh, he, he's got a lot of decisions right. He's you know, done a good job today, no question. He's had a great day. The crowd try to get behind their free jacks, but that one is good, and we are at 37-35. 80 minutes on the clock. We have some injury time, guys. There is an opportunity here for the free jacks to come back. Don't count them out. Yep, 38, 35, and as you say, one minute plus whatever the ref's got left on the clock. 38. Sorry, I might have misspoken there. 38, 35. Couldn't do my math for a second. Too excited in this absorbing contest here. As three well, points. As excited as you can be <laughs> on top of a crane in Boston in December. Well, here yeah, comes the high early December. Here. He goes short with this one. They're trying to get it. Brakely's going to go up for it. Ball has been knocked around a couple of times. We'll see who comes down with it. Referee says it's going back. And I believe it is free jack ball there. I couldn't see it just where we were. And the free jacks on the attack here with an opportunity. We'll see what they can get done. Not to right, We're in referee's time, so there could be a couple of minutes left. Discipline is the key here, guys. No Slater, the, the replacement. Gets it to Leader. Leader moves to Harajli. He's been good all day. Harajli pops the ball up. Collins. Collins trying to step a couple of players. They've got some runners moving across the field. Little shot out the back there almost didn't work, but now the ball is wide, and they have some runners. The ball is certainly wide out there. Rooney screaming for a forward pass, but doesn't happen. No, Black, no! They no. cannot find that outside area. Has a little knock on there by the Boston Free Jacks. And that is the end of our game here. This incredible exhibition match between the New England Free Jacks and Rugby United New York comes down to a kick at the very end there. Just an unbelievable finish to an un unbelievable game. Guys, what are your thoughts? Well, if, like I said earlier, if, it, if this is what we're in store for as we get a look at the replay of the knock on by the Free Jacks, if this is what we're in store for, it's going to be a fun 2019 MLR season. Steve, we were expecting something very different there. Thoughts on that game? Yeah, I would agree. Um, I think, you know, Rooney gets away with a win. Uh, it's good for both coaches. I mean, Mike Tolkien will, you know, have a better uh, understanding of what he's got, who he's got. But certainly, if I was a free jacks, I would be a little bit happier. So 38-35 is a score and a way win, preseason game. Um, Free Jacks will be comfortable with the uh, the result here on their debut. 
And we're going to shoot down to Matt McCarthy, who is talking to general manager Alex Magleby of the Free Jacks after that great, great performance by his team. Alex Magleby, a tough loss. But a, a great effort and something that those of us in the pundit world yeah. did not anticipate. Yeah, it was, it was a fun game, right? And I think the whole point of all of this is it's a process to learn a bit about ourselves. I think New York had that chance today. They, they were able to take some things away, I think, for heading into the MLR season. And certainly for us, it's a, it's a great another step forward. We had a great event today. The local community was fantastic on a short notice. It was a beautiful day for rugby and a competitive game, and that's, that's what we want. Well, you got to be thrilled. I mean, yeah. the outcome you had, our man of the match actually is for you guys, Ty Leader. Yeah, he had, a, he had a great game, and he, he led the team well. And there's a few others, and I thought New York had a couple standouts as well. So it was, it was good. It's good for the game. Solid day for MLR uh, and for the for the uh, New England Free Jacks. Absolutely, no question. Thanks. All right, cheers. I'm going to get some of the other guys in here right now. Uh, just an unbelievable result here. As I said to, to uh, Alex, those of us in the booth or those of us that are actually supposed to know what we're talking about picked Rooney by a, a wide margin. Nobody told the Free Jacks. They were out here with a chip on their shoulder from the get-go. You could tell that they had maybe some lingering memories for some of the players that had played in these exhibition matches last year between Boston and the uh, Rooney squad. But we're waiting on a couple of more guests. But in the meantime, you had some exciting end-to-end -end rugby, physical rugby. It was fast. It was furious. You had some amazing performances, specifically on the Free Jack side with Ty Leader, the fly half, making those kicks from everywhere, including critical conversions to tie the match up. And then just at the end there, you had an infusion of some veteran talent in Mike Petrie coming off the pitch, dusting off the father time cleats and, and really giving this team a bit of an injection, maybe some experience and holding on desperately to get that penalty to win the match. But in the meantime, you're going to see behind me, the teams are huddling, they're shaking hands. Uh, we're going to have both coaches, Josh Smith of the Free Jacks, Mike Tolkien of Rugby United New York. We'll have Tiffany Faye, who is made history. Uh, actually, we're going we're gonna to wrap it up. I'm sorry, we are out of time. But man of the match, Ty Gleeder for the host team, the New England Free Jacks, the winners, Rugby United New York, MLR action here, Next Level Rugby. On behalf of all my colleagues, Matt McCarthy signing off.